Hey, everybody, it's Aaron. I hope your 2023 is off to a great start. What you're about to listen to is the first seven minute story of 2023. And right now, I'm actually standing in the middle of our, I call it the den. Corey doesn't like when I say the word den, but you know, it's like a garden level area in some split homes, split level homes. I love it. Uh, we have our TV, the books, the record player, all that kind of stuff. But I'm actually moving recording spaces. I've been telling stories in this upstairs closet for multiple years. If you've been following this podcast for a long time, that's where I am when I'm recording this tiny little closet surrounded by foam, got a microphone, got great sound, but it's getting a little tight in there. And so with the help of Corey, she's pretty much doing a lot of the planning and all that kind of stuff. She's better at the stuff than I am. We're moving me down to the basement. So I guess to upgrade, I got to go down and we're going down to the basement and it's going to be a much bigger space, even better sound for the stories that you hear. And I can move around a little bit, do stuff for the podcast consulting business and all of that stuff. So I'm actually really excited to, to move. So that's my start to the 2023. Uh, I also wanted to thank you all because as you know, we always take a couple of weeks off over the holiday season. It's just been a thing that I do. And then we come back in January and continue the season. But what's amazing is that you all, your listenership around Christmas and New Year, when we weren't posting any new stories, you took us into the top 100. I think we peaked at 97 in the United States of America for, for performing arts on Apple Podcasts. It's so awesome just to know that we could take a break. I don't have to post a story and that you're there listening, binging, and telling people about it, and helping this uh, this podcast grow. This is amazing. I just wanted to say thank you for that. It means a lot. Uh, okay. I'm really anxious for you to hear this story. This story is titled The Dandelion Salad. And what you'll hear, not only with the story, that's a story that my grandfather told me that I'm sharing. Not only will I think you enjoy the, the premise and the story itself, but also you'll find out what happened with the the level of viewership and how many people around the globe have ended up hearing and seeing this story, including you. It's a pretty cool thing. So stay tuned and enjoy, and I'll talk to you soon. My grandfather told a short story that was heard by millions of people around the globe. Before I tell you that story, though, before we get to it, I want to paint a picture for you. I want you to imagine this. Go with me on this journey here. You can smell your favorite dish being made, and it's coming from the kitchen. Even better, it's someone that you love making it. Could be your wife, could be your husband, mom, dad, family, whoever but it's being made. And at first the smell is kind of faint and you're kind of like, like, yeah, I can smell something really good. And then you recognize, oh, it's your favorite dish. It's your favorite food, whatever that is to you. Just imagine that first sensation. And then you can hear them kind of moving around in the kitchen. You can hear them banging against the, the oven and opening the oven and you hear timers in the fridge with ingredients coming in and out or chopping. Or maybe you hear the crackling of a piece of meat being put into a, a saute pan or some vegetables being sauteed. And now you can smell the other aromatics, some garlic, some onion, something in the air. And you're like, man, you start salivating. And you know that this is going to be an amazing dinner. And you can't wait. And then you go up there and it's true. They're like, it's your favorite. And you're like, oh my God, thank you so much. You wash your hands, you sit down and there's that dish right in front of you. You're so hungry, you dive right in, but you don't want to go too fast because you want to savor every bite. The flavors and the textures interplaying and dancing like a ballet. And you can feel your whole body just sort of accepting this and it, you feel nourished. They call it home cooking, but it's real because it's not just that it was cooked at home. It was how it was cooked and who cooked it and their intention in cooking it. And it literally revitalizes you. 
And that experience in itself, to me, is one of the best experiences you can have being alive. It also is an experience for me that shows the power of food and memory and food and story and how they are so interconnected. I saw this one commercial that's been out, maybe it's because I'm watching a lot of football, but there's one commercial where around the holidays, it was this young guy trying to create this dish that his grandmother created. And when you're watching the commercial, you see his grandma, his grandmother is helping him along the way. And the reveal at the end is it was her spirit and she wasn't really there, but she was there. And when he serves the dish, even though he kind of haphazardly tried to make it and do his best, he did her proud and he looked up and there's a picture of her overlooking the entire family and the food he's about to serve. My God, that's what it's about. You know what I'm saying? And I've been thinking about this and I remember that my grandfather had told me one of the best stories about food that I had ever heard. It was kind of ironic because he told me this story right as we were about to eat a meal, but it was different this time because I had invited him to dinner. I had just got my first job, my first paycheck. I was just really proud and I wanted him to be proud of me. So he went out to dinner with me and it was kind of a cool thing. And it was a fancier restaurant, like more upscale than we were used to. But the waitress comes out and talks about the appetizers and we're both looking and, and we see this, it's like a wild green salad and it had all these fancy names on it. So I was like, that looks good. Let's get those. And so we wait for a few minutes. Waitress comes back with the salads and my grandfather looks down at his salad. He starts laughing. I was like, what are you laughing at? And he goes, there's dandelions in my salad. <laughs> I was like, well, yeah, it's like a fancier restaurant, I guess. It's just dandelion salad, Grandpa. Enjoy it. He goes, no, 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 it's fine. He just said it reminds me of a memory that I have of growing up in the Depression. And he goes on. He says, my mother would send my sister and I out into the front yard. And we were really poor during this time, couldn't afford really anything. And in our front yard, it was kind of like in quotations, he said, there was just a strip of grass. And on that strip of grass was a bunch of dandelions. And my mother would have us pick every single one of them, put them in a bucket, and then come back inside and bring it to her. He said, and she would take all of the dandelions out and start preparing them. And he said, I would just watch her and she would wash all of them. And next thing you knew, he said, she would start sauteing these and olive oil and just adding just a few simple ingredients, salt, pepper, and some garlic. And he said, and then she would have my sister and I sit at the table and she would bring us this plate of sauteed dandelions. And that's what we had for lunch. And he goes, and I just can't believe it. All these years later, I'm looking down at this salad, but I'm here at this fancy restaurant with my grandson who's buying me dinner. He kind of got like tears in his eyes. And I was like, whoa. And he said, the other thing that's crazy is I can't believe this salad is $12, he said. <laughs> He said, no offense. He goes, because I just remember picking this out of my the strip of grass in the front of our house. And he goes, and to be honest with you, Aaron, this is very good. He takes a bite. But the way my mother prepared it is just a little bit better. But I appreciate you so much taking me to dinner. That was it. We kind of moved on to the next subject. But there was this moment, right, that happened. And what I didn't realize it was going to be one of our last meals together before he passed away. I'm so glad we had that dinner together. Now, at the beginning of the seven minutes, I told you that that little story that my grandfather told me was heard by millions of people around the globe. Now, many of those people are you listening right now in seven minute stories, the audio podcast. But several weeks ago, I did a one minute video version of this story I just told you about the dandelion salad. And if you haven't yet, go to my YouTube channel and subscribe because that's what I put out every Tuesday is one minute video adaptations of the seven minute stories you listen to every week. So anyways, I put the dandelion story out there and it was viewed by over 15 million people around the globe. And what was amazing is all of the comments and the stories that people left talking about their grandparents and their loved ones and their connection with food. And it was so affirming about the connection I was talking about between 
food and story and our common humanity and the goodness in that. It was such a gift that that happened. And all I can think about is just how proud my grandfather would be to know that his little story about some dandelions that he picked during the Depression would reach so many people around the globe. I don't think you could ever imagine it. So there you go, Grandpa. Love you. Seven Minute Stories is created and performed by Aaron Califato. Our senior audio engineer is Ken Went. Our resident artist is Pete Whitehead. Original music by TJ Duke. If you or your company needs help starting a podcast, Aaron and Ken's company, Valley View, does just that. Reach out to them at valleyview.fm. Special thanks to our partners at Evergreen Podcasts, and I'm Corey Burse. Make sure to tune in next week for another story.